So, so far we have made this pretty fun bubble chart. Um, it is a collection of musical artists uh, that are different bubbles. Their bubbles are sized according to the number of albums they have sold worldwide. And each of these bubbles has a picture of the artist as the background. So this is the uh, CSV we're working from. Every artist has a name. Every artist has sales. That's the size of the bubble. Um, every artist has an image path. We use that in order to get their images. And every artist has a decade. So we are now going to use the decade so that when you click a button, all of the pre-2000 artists will go to the left and all the post-2000 artists will go to the right. So it's going to be kind of like this New York Times piece from uh, 2012 where you click types of spending and they split and you click all spending and they come back together. So in order to do this, we're going to have to do two things. The first one is the easiest, and that is expand this graphic to be a little bit wider so we have a little bit more room to work with. Right now it's 500 by 500. Let's make it 500 by 900 width. Great. So the reason why all of these bubbles are moving and moving towards the center is because we're using something in D3 called a force simulation. So this is our force simulation right here. And a force simulation is a collection of forces. And the combination of all of these forces is what makes these circles go to a certain place. So we can see right now we've defined three different forces, X, Y, and collide. You can make up whatever kind of names you want for these. Um, it's just if you revise the force later, you end up needing to use the exact same name for them. So let's go uh, one by one through these forces. Um, we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. So the first force is called collide, and it is a D3 force collide. D3 force collide is all about not having your circles overlap one another. Um, if we said, so normally when you have a force, you just give it a number and it says, okay, I'm going to apply the same force to every single circle. But the way that D3 force collide works is you need to make the colliding force of your circle, or the anti-colliding force of your circle, um, the same as the radius of your circle. So if we go down and we look at our circle, our circle um, is scaled according to the number of sales that the artist has made. Um, so for example, Fetty Wap right here has sold 1 million albums worldwide, so his circle is only uh, a 10 radius. Whereas Madonna here has sold 300 million albums worldwide, so her circle is, I believe, uh, 80 uh, radius. So if we go back up here, we will see that we're using the exact same thing with the force collide function. Um, every time it says, how anti collide or what, what kind of a force field should I put up around this node? They say, oh, well, it depends on how many sales this artist has had. So Fetty Wap gets a very small one. Here, let's, let's just replace this. Let's say we made every one uh, 20. So now everyone is clustered around each other. Let's say we made everyone 80. So we get a lot more space going on out there. It's a nice, nice equal spacing there, but not what we want. Um, so because we want this to be different for every single different circle, we're going to make it a function because that's what you do. And you say return radius scale, e sales, and we add a little bit of extra spacing um, just because I think it looks nice. Oh, I did this wrong. Oh, yes, we need another, another parenthesis there. All right, so looking good. So now what we want to do is we want to add two buttons to the page. And we're just going to make this easy. We're going to edit the HTML. And we're just going to add a button. And it's going to say decade split. And another button. And we're going to call that combine. We need to give them IDs so we can talk about them later. Um, but that's pretty much as simple as it gets. Um, they're buttons, and we need to 
listen for events on them. So we're going to listen for clicks on both the decade button and the combine button. So let's get going. We are going to say B3 select decade on click function no D there. Uh, console log, you clicked me. So every time we click the decade button, it's going to run this. Let's test that, and now we'll go talk about our other forces. Okay, so we have two other forces here. We have a Y force and we have an X force. And the Y force is a force in the, the, on the Y axis, and this is the target Y. So the target Y is height divided by two. So height divided by two is this line going across the middle, this invisible line. Um, this is zero up at the top, height is at the bottom, height divided by two is in the middle. So this force is like, a, it's like gravity um, acting to pull everything towards the middle of the page. If let's say we got rid of force X, you would see that everything clusters along the Y axis and has no regard for the X axis. And it would be the same, it's the same thing with the X. We use a force called force X. We're saying width divided by two, this is zero, this is width on the right hand side. Width divided by two is right in the middle. So we have one force that's trying to push things towards the middle uh, along the x-axis and one force that's trying to push things to the middle along the y-axis and what that generally does is just pushes everything towards the center. Each one of these functions, each one of these uh, forces has a strength so they're not very strong forces but they're enough to get everything to the middle. All right so what we want to do is instead of pushing everything towards the middle we want to have some things on the left hand side and some things on the right hand side. Now we're going to go back to when we had the colliding force here. What the colliding force did was it changed based on our data point, right? So based on the sales of the data point, um, it either it, it changed the size of the radius scale. And so what we need to do now is What's the difference between on the left-hand side and the right-hand side? The x-axis. So what we need to do is make it so our force x changes based on our data points. So some of them will go over here and some of them will go over there. So first we're going to do it without clicking the button and then we'll move it down to being where we click the button. So right now width divided by 2 is where the X force is always trying to push everything. It's always trying to push everything right along this line, right in the middle. But if we want it to happen on a per element basis, on a per data point basis, we just make it a function, right? So return, let's just always make it still width divided by two, refresh, fine. So this is actually getting a little bit complicated. So I'm going to pull it out as a variable. So force X equals, And I'm going to do the same thing with force collide. So var force collide equals this. So instead of typing it all inside this tiny area here, we are able to map them. All right, everything still works well. So every time we change this force X here, it's still going to be changing um, the force part of the simulation. So uh, right now it is still saying we want everything to be width divided by two on the X axis. Uh, what we want to do is say sometimes over here, sometimes on, sometimes on the left hand side, sometimes on the right hand side. Now if we look at our Excel, Decade is the column we're looking at, and it is pre-2000 or post-2000. So we could do something as simple as this. If d.decade um, is equal to pre-2000, 
pre 2000 return, I don't know, let's say 150. Otherwise, return, how wide is this? 900, uh, return 800. So let's just make this 200 and 800. So if uh, you are before 2000, your X force is gonna push you towards 200, otherwise it's gonna force you, push you towards 800. So we'll save this and we'll refresh. And there you go. Um, I think these might be a little close to the page if we added more information on there. So let's push them in a little bit further. Um, maybe 250 and 750. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we have uh, one X-Force for people over here uh, in the pre-2000s, and then one X-Force, or the X-Force is giving out a different value for people pre and post-2000. But here's the thing, we need this to change based on when we push those buttons. So, um, let's actually, let's start the combine button first. I know we, we already made the decade split button a little bit, but let's work on the combine button now. So if we go down here, um, d3.select, and I believe I called this button combine. Yes, the ID is combine. Combine on click function console.log combine the bubbles. And yes, it is now saying combine the bubbles. So what we want to do when someone clicks combine the bubbles is apply a new force X. So right now, the force X we're using is splitting everything apart, but we want to pull everything together. So there, uh, there are a few ways to do this. Um, we'll do it the inelegant way first, and then we'll make it a more elegant way later. So right here, see that the simulation is called simulation, and we named the X force X. So all we need to do actually is go down here and we're going to say when we click combine simulation dot force x and then we can actually overwrite that force with a new one so d3 dot force x where do we want it to go everything with divided by two how strong do we want to make it strength is optional um, but let's just use the strength that we have up here 0 0.05 0.05. So what this is going to do is the simulation, it's gonna grab the simulation, it's gonna take that X force, or the force on the X axis, which was pushing them into two separate groups, and it's gonna replace it with one force that acts equally on everyone, pushing them towards the middle. So the two X forces aren't gonna to have to fight with one another, because we're saying force X, it's gonna overwrite our old one. So save it refresh, and then push the button. What happens? Oh, it moves a little bit. But it doesn't seem to quite get back together. So one thing we might think about doing is changing the strength. Let's make it a little bit stronger because who knows what's going on there, right? 0.5 instead of 0 0.05. Combine. Yeah, it works, but then it's overpowering the y-axis one. So the problem we're having is, let's let these settle and then click combine. They don't really move at all. But if I very quickly hit refresh and then combine, they combine successfully. So what's happening here is all of the nodes are slowing down and they're losing energy and they're deciding, oh, I'm basically too sleepy um, to start running again. So what we're going to need to do is two lines of code. Um, alpha target 0 0.5 restart. Every time you change the simulation you are going to give it a little bit of a nudge with an alpha target to tell it how quickly it should be moving and then you're going to say restart the simulation from the beginning um, with our new force.
So they come apart. Previously, when we cl clicked combine, everything was too sleepy. But this time, it's working because we're saying, hey, get started again. Start, start this over again. Um, and now we can do the same thing with the decade split, where we just cut and paste this code. And instead of uh, this force x, oh, hey, remember up at the top, we actually saved this. We have this force x already here. We already have this variable. What if we just use that again? So every time we want to split, we can just use that variable. So we'll save, we'll refresh, combine, split, combine, split. Now, it's kind of ugly to have all of these forces written in different places. Some of the forces are written here. Um, this one, we're just using a variable, but it's really written up top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename all of our forces and we're just gonna write them once. So this force X, I'm gonna call force X combine. Then I'm going to make another one and I'm just going to call it, or sorry, force X uh, separate and then force X combine. So now I'm just defining them all in the same spot. So if we want to start our simulation off in one spot, we say our X force should be force X combine. We can go down here and say our X force should be force X combine. Whereas if we click the decade button, it should be force X separate. It just makes things a little bit more readable, just a little bit more readable. So when we refresh, they will all start off together and we can split them, we can combine them, split them, combine them. What you're going to find is it's going to be, it's kind of tough to figure out how to get the right values for things like alpha target and for things like strength. Cause you'll see these are kind of still playing around and there's still a lot of overlap um, so you might think, oh, I should make my forces a little bit stronger, um, maybe 0 0.1, um, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. But in the end, yeah, so that, that didn't really work on the combining because it needs to be the same strength as your Y force. Otherwise, it will cluster either on the X axis or the Y axis. And you'll see that Adam Levine here and Drake there are jittering a lot. Um, so let's undo. We'll go back to 0 0.05. This ends up being an alpha target issue. So if you made the alpha target um, maybe 0.25, it will move a little bit more slowly. And you say, well, what are the magic numbers? What should I really make be my alpha target and all of my strengths? And the answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it ends up just being a magic game of changing all of these numbers until something makes sense. So in order to get your visual to be what you'd like, if it's interactive, um, change your alpha targets. Um, and if it's not interactive, if it's just a, uh, or if the, the arrangement isn't interactive, um, just keep looking at all of your strengths, all of your strengths, just to see um, how well they're doing. Um, play around with the numbers, just do it until it looks right. Kind of the unfortunate part with force diagrams. Um, okay, so what do we do? We learned that using the power of buttons, you can take the force's name right here and then you can overwrite it in a function. So we, we're using this force x combine as x and then later we said no no we're going to replace this force with a new force that's going to keep things separate but every time you change forces you should probably um, give it an alpha target and then give it a restart and then that will make your simulation kind of perk up again and rearrange itself in the way that it should